Hi guys, I just wanted to um, start talking a little bit about coral reefs. We're um, we're on that unit now. You've seen the 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 um, video that I put up on Bonaire, which was a really good example of a coral reef. And I thought what we would do is we would talk a little bit about these these coral reefs and and why they're important and and where are you to find them and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> coral reefs are some of the most beautiful areas on Earth. They they're incredible. Um, they protect the coastlines from waves and storms. They are a great source of tourism. Um, people, if, you've, if, if you've ever been to some of the beautiful beaches in the Caribbean or in other places in the world, South Pacific, you know that these places are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, they also are a habitat for many, many marine organisms that end up on your table as food. Um, they protect a lot of the juveniles as they grow up of some fish that grow up in the coral reef and then move to the, the open ocean where they can be collected. Um, they also are a great place for um, nutrient recycling. They provide a lot of resources. For instance, there's a lot of drug manufacturing research that's done on coral reefs. Um, they also provide food, so they're a pretty special place. Um, coral reefs, like I said, rival tropical rainforests for beauty and richness and complexity. The, the diversity of the life in a coral reef is, uh, is outstanding. Um, the, and the basic structure is really made by living things, by organisms. So it's this three-dimensional framework, too. It's, it's got height and width, and it, most of the life on, on land is on the land. You know, very, very few organisms are able to go into the soil or up into the air. Um, so, so we're kind of limited to a, to a 2D structure. Uh, coral reefs are three-dimensional. They tend to be found in certain spots. They tend to be found in shallow water, and we're going to get into why, but, but shallow water because they need the light. There is an organism that lives in them called zooxanthellae that we're going to talk a lot about. They, the zooxanthellae are a dinoflagellate symbiont. They are a mutualist. They live in the tissues of the corals, and they provide the corals with food. They provide the corals with some nutrients. And the corals provide them with, with raw materials and such. The zooxanthellae are, are um, phytoplankton. They, if they're not in the coral, they're phytoplankton. And so they are photosynthetic. They make their own food. And the extra they give to the coral. Um, but they need light. So shallow water has more light. So you need to have shallow water. Usually their coral reefs aren't found much deeper than about 50 meters, which is about 164 feet. Um, which is pretty deep. The scuba diving, sport diving limit is 130, at, and I've been to 130, and it's deep, uh, or it feels deep. But but at 130 feet, there's less light than at the surface. Um, coral reefs are only found on continental shelves, uh, they um, and around islands because they need to be shallow. Okay, they're also found. Uh, on the tops of sea mounts, we'll get to this, an underwater mountain. But but um, they, there are corals that grow in deep water, but they don't really build reefs. Um, the reef building corals are limited to warm waters because it, warm water makes it easier to get the calcium carbonate out of the out of the water. So they're pretty much limited to the what's called the horse latitude um, from about thirty degrees north latitude. To about 30 degrees south latitude. Let me let me redo this. From about 30 degrees north to about 30 degrees south latitude, and you can see so everywhere, everywhere in here is where coral reefs will form. We live up in here, so we don't have coral reefs in our area. Okay, but but if you notice down in Florida, in the Florida Keys are right here. There are coral reefs. Okay, in the Gulf of Mexico, there are coral reefs. Okay, throughout the this is the Caribbean. Throughout the Caribbean, are coral reefs. 
Mm, let me see if I can get rid of it. Okay. So, so coral reefs are found from about 30 degrees north latitude to about 30 degrees south latitude. Okay. Let me back this up a little bit so you can get the, so you can get the notes here. Um, so roughly Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn, they're about 23 and a half degrees. So it's a little bit north of, of that and a little bit south of that, but so, okay. So, um, like I said, you have to have warm water so the calcium carbonate can come out of solution um, and, and provide the corals with their skeletons. Okay. Um, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit on, is about the minimum temperature. It's about 19 degrees Celsius is about the minimum temperature for coral reefs to form. Um, if it gets much warmer than that, they become stressed and they become bleached. We're going to do a whole piece on bleaching coming up. But bleaching, if something is bleached, it means it loses its color, it turns white. If coral um, gets stressed, they'll kick out the zooxanthellae. And one of the things that zooxanthellae does is give them their color. So they turn white and they die if they're not, if they're not, if the conditions aren't, got, don't get better in a fairly short amount of time. We're talking about like a couple of weeks. Um, so some we'll get to this a little bit later again, but some possible sources of, of warming are, are power plant discharge. If if a power plant is discharging warmer water into the water around the coral reef, it can stress the corals and the, and they'll die. Um, El Nino is another one. We'll 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 get to that a little bit later. But El Nino is a phenomenon. It's a global phenomenon that changes the weather patterns around the world. Um, global warming maybe. Um, there are some indications that global warming has a, has a negative effect on the coral reefs. Okay, so they are so big that they're considered geological structures. They're huge. Matter of fact, you can see the Great Barrier Reef from space. Let me show you the Great Barrier Reef from space. Um, here we go. So if you look, we are... Well, I can even zoom in. We are so here's Connecticut and Long Island Sound. If I keep zooming in here, you'll see that we're going to be there. We are. Here's Plainville. Okay, so here's Plainville. Let's go out now. Let's zoom out. And we're going to go see the Great Barrier Reef. So I'm going to spin the Earth this way. Here's the Pacific Ocean, right? Here's Australia. And from here's the whole Earth. You can see the whole Earth. And you can see from space this dark area here. From there to there is the Great Barrier Reef. You can see it from space. It's so big. Okay, which I think is pretty amazing because it's all made up of living things. So if I zoom in here, come on. If I zoom in here, here's the Great Barrier Reef. And these little these little red and white striped things, those are dive flags. Those kind of tell people, oh, it's a great diving there, whatnot. But, but that's the Great Barrier Reef, just offshore from Australia. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, there's a lot of organisms that add to the reef, but they pretty much play a minor role. Um, we'll, get to, we'll get to some of them coming up. Coral reefs live underwater, so they're subtitle. Okay. Um, and so that's all I really wanted to say about coral reefs and where they're found and why. And so we'll pick up next time with the coral animals and the anatomy of the coral animals and the, and the way that they're, they're put together. Okay. So thank you very much. And I will see you soon. Close this down.